Hey, what is up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher from We Are Film and today we're taking a look at the Mix Pre 3 Mark II from Sound Vices. So, let's get into it. So if you've never heard of the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3, the original, basically Sound Devices is a company that makes some of the best, maybe if not the best, audio devices out there. Now, typically in the past, they were really known for their mixers. So an audio engineer would have a mixer and then also have a recorder. And again, Sound Devices is one of the best companies out there when it comes to this, especially when it comes to having really, really clean preamps. But at the time, they were very expensive. They were more on the really high end. So it was something that bigger productions like indie films or actual big, large film sets would have. And, you know, for the lower budget filmmakers like myself and a lot of others, there really wasn't that like cheaper alternative. Now, the original Mix Pre 3 kind of became that cheaper alternative because of course it was also a recorder. Now that's one of the biggest things for an indie filmmaker or someone like myself and all of us most likely, you're looking for something that's a great mixer but it's also a great recorder. Obviously there's things like the Zoom H6 and there's Tascam recorders out there and I love and own both of those but this Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Mark II is actually something different. So this is the Mix Pre 3 Mark II. So this is a second generation of the Mix Pre 3 and one of the biggest selling points of this is the new 32-bit flow audio. Now 32-bit flow audio, sounds like a confusing name and it kind of is. It's very hard to understand and quite honestly, I don't think I completely understand it. So to put it simply, this is the closest thing to an audio version of RAW that we have. In essence, you have a massive amount of dynamic range when it comes to your audio. And for me, this is a really nice safety. Now, typically I do a lot of commercial shoots, corporate shoots, as well as narrative filmmaking. And one of the hardest things is typically I'm running audio or I'm having someone run audio for me, but I'm not actually going out and hiring an audio engineer. Now, of course, in a proper world, you'd go out and hire an audio engineer, someone who knows what they're doing. But unfortunately, in some of the lower budget projects that I do, that just isn't possible. And of course, when I'm running it myself, I'm worried about a million different things at once. And one of the hardest things to do is recover something if it clips. So typically on a recorder, if you were to record something and it would get too loud, and let's say you weren't near the mixer, even though it shows to it near you, if you weren't able to turn that down, that audio is clipped, and once it's clipped, it is gone. On this Mix Pre 3 Mark II in the 32-bit flow audio, you can basically pull back almost anything. Now I'm saying almost anything because yes, obviously it's not totally perfect, but you can pretty much do anything. And what this allows me to do is focus more on my mic placement and making sure that my mic is properly aligned with whoever's speaking. And then obviously I wanna set a bass level, but if they were to talk too loud or too quiet, I can fix it later. Now again, this isn't the proper way. You of course wanna do this as best you can in the actual Mix Pre 3 as much as you can there live. But again, it's just great knowing that you can do this. One of the only unfortunate things is that the 32-bit audio is only supported by a few programs. Right now, Adobe Audition seems to be one of the only ones. I'm not 100% sure on that, but at the time of this video, it seems to be. So the Mix Pre 3 2 has two XLR inputs as well as an audio auxiliary input that can actually have two channels. So technically you can record up to five total tracks at one time. It also has a USB-C controller, which is really nice because it can be used to actually power the device but it can also be used to plug into your computer and uses an audio interface. So if you're someone who does like podcasting or things like that, you can actually use it as a podcasting mixer and then record that directly to the computer or you can record to the Mix Pre 3 and then, you know, do something later with it. So the Mix Pre 3 also records to SD cards. It's full size SD cards, which I kind of like. Now there are a lot of different ways to actually power the Mix Pre 3 Mark II. And my favorite way is actually using the Sony, I think it's LP battery, uh, battery sled. And what this thing does is it actually clips onto the back and then you can have two Sony LP batteries. Now, typically I run it with just one because that's usually more than enough. But again, if you're recording in that 32-bit flow audio, it takes a lot more battery and a lot more card space. On the front, it's very, very simple. You have a record button, you have a stop button, and a play button. You also have three input or mixers knobs, depending on how you set it up. That's one of the great things about this Mix Pre 3. Although, yes, this is made for a high-end professional workflow, it is very simple to use, and you can actually set it up simply. There's actually a menu option for a simple menu or advanced menu. So again, if you're looking to really just kind of have something that's really high-quality preamps and it's just great overall, but you don't want a ton of customization or you don't need a ton of customization, this thing can do both. So one of the things I love is that this thing has a very big and bright monitor so you can easily see the levels on whatever channels you're recording on. And it just makes things very simple because obviously one of the things that's really difficult is if you're running camera and you're running audio at the same time, to be able to look on one of those little screens that are black and white and you can't really tell. Also, I do love that the actual mixer or input knobs themselves
themselves actually have a nice glow to it. So it shows you green when something is not clipping or red when it is clipping. But if you're in 32-bit flow audio, it doesn't matter. Of course, like most recorders, it has phantom power. It has a bunch of quarter 20 threads. There's of course a headphone out and a nice headphone dial right on the right-hand side. And of course, this thing has straps so you can easily put it in a bag or you can actually attach straps right to it. The device itself is built super nice. Like it just feels really heavy duty. I love that it's like a slim factor where like the Zoom H6, you always feel like it's gonna bump a knob or you're gonna bump a button or something and something's gonna happen. But again, knowing that this thing is just made for that professional usage, it just works. Like I really can't speak highly of this enough. And honestly, at the price point, I think it's incredibly fair. If not, probably a little underpriced. In general, if you're looking for an audio recorder and you're looking for something that is incredibly high quality, that's going to get you the best sound possible, again, these preamps are just super clean. So we wanted to do something a little bit fun for this video. We wanted to show you a couple different scenarios where this 32-bit audio can really come in handy. So we have three kind of scenarios. We have your first one, which is an ASMR video, where basically the ASMR artist would have the microphone turned obviously way up because, well, they mix pretty three way up because they're you know whispering and talking very quietly. And and then we're gonna have a loud sound come in and then you can see that we can pull all of this back. Today on the ASMR Dudes, we're gonna be trying out some sick Red Bull. These are some of my favorites. Have you ever had some of these before, Tyler? I haven't, have you ever had a Charlie horse? Oh, it's not very ASMR of you there, buddy. So you can see typically where it's clipping, and in most cases, if this was a typical recorder, we would be screwed. But in this case, we bring it to Adobe Audition, we just select what we want to actually drag down or fix, and we just turn our gain knob down. These are some of my favorites. Have you ever had some of these before, Tyler? I haven't. Have you ever had a Charlie horse? A Charlie what? <laughs> oh! It's not very ASMR of you there, buddy. And there it is. It's back. So we shoot a lot of weddings, and the next scenario that we have happens quite often, unfortunately. When we're shooting the actual toasts and things like that, what ends up happening almost 90% of the time is we do the level test with the DJ, and then the DJ decides to crank it up, whether it's from a practical term or they just crank it up because they want to. And this happens all the time, and I've probably lost at least three or four toasts, three or four weddings toasts because of that. I can't remember when we haven't been friends. And now that you found Tiffany, you two, oh, fuck. I said Tiffany, didn't I? Stephanie. You remember Tiffany, all right? Yeah. Should I turn this up, dude? Yeah, I'm gonna turn it up. Anyway, so what I meant to say was... <laughs> Whoa. I love you. So same thing, we have it recorded. There you go, it's clipped. We would never be able to get this back normally. We bring it to audition. Anyway, so what I meant to say was... Whoa. I love you. And there it is. So the last scenario is a pretty typical one that we come up quite often. We get the level set for an interview and what ends up happening is most times people talk quieter than they normally are going to. So we set the levels to that and then they end up talking super loud. All right, rolling here, sounds please. Can you just uh, give me your ABCs? Uh, like the alphabet? Yeah. Uh, A, B, C, D, E. So, um, I, do, I really don't have any issues with uh, Corona. I, I don't really actually drink alcohol at all. Uh, so, I guess I got nothing to worry about. So again, as you can see, it is super clipped and typically it would be gone. But again, we bring it into Adobe Audition. We just grab that selection. We pull that game down and boom, there it is. I, do, I really don't have any issues with uh, Corona. I, I don't really actually drink. So I don't want this to sound like it's a way to make your filmmaking lazy by any means. On the lower budget end, it's really nice if you have someone who maybe is inexperienced and they're not an audio engineer. As long as they can get the right mic placement, you can easily, you know, if it's a little bit too hot or it's a little bit too quiet, you know that you can easily control that later on. Again, having this is like having a dual recorder on your camera. It's maybe not always necessary, but it is very, very nice. 
as long as you don't look at this as lazy filmmaking, like, oh, you know what, doesn't matter, I'm just going to set the level, whatever, and we'll figure it out later. As long as you're not using it in that sense, but you're using it as a safety and a backup, this thing is incredibly powerful. So overall, I can really not say enough about the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Mark II. And honestly, if you were looking for an audio recorder, if you already have one, like maybe one of the cheaper Tascams or Zooms, 100%, I would recommend this thing to anyone. Anyway, guys, if you found this review helpful, let us know down in the comments below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let us know what else you guys want to see next. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching We Are Film. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.